Back in the old format show, I reviewed Castlevania Lords of Shadow on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. I was so excited, I even got the Collector's Edition, and after playing it and reviewing it, I found this game was worthy of the name Castlevania. Now, there has been a game in this series that has been released since then, but it was on the 3DS, which I can't get footage from, so that was an impossibility at the time. But as of late, a lot of companies have been taking a lot of their portable titles and releasing them on major consoles and dubbing them HD. So what happens when a portable Castlevania game gets a similar treatment? Well, for me, I get a recording loophole. Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate was originally released on the Nintendo 3DS in 2012, with an HD re-release on the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live in 2013. This game is supposed to fill in a gap between Lords of Shadow and Lords of Shadow 2. We start with Simon, a boy who was raised in the woods by barbarians when his mother was killed by roving monsters. He enters the famed Dracula's Castle due to a mirror he had that was passed down from his father, Trevor. Eventually, the game lets you play as another character, Alucard, and then you play the events that Trevor experienced 20 years earlier. So, once again, I run into a game where fanboys are going to be storming Konami's offices with pitchforks and torches screaming, WITCHCRAFT! Because it's not Symphony of the Night 2. Anyway, this new Castlevania tries to take cues from the older exploration-style Castlevania games, such as Symphony of the Night and Portrait of Ruin. Each of the characters have different styles of play, and each of the castle maps is specifically designed to take advantage of this. You won't have Alucard running into the life-sucking waterfalls, nor will you have Simon running into a giant gap that he can't run over without speed-enhancing boots. They also managed to incorporate the leveling system and weapon combo system of the first game, which I really liked. The little extras are nice as well. I like the cinematic scenes, which have a comic book look to them. The HD facelift adds the one thing that I didn't like about the original version, which was having mouths that actually moved. The controls, I'll admit, are a little stiff, but it plays well as long as you're used to blocking and what the game dictates is movement speed. Mercury Steam also addressed an issue with how easy the 3DS game was, adding three difficulty levels to the start, with easy being the 3DS version. I really like all the neat little things that they did with this game. It updated it a little bit, added some more difficulty, and made it a little more fun. And I'd hate to rain on this parade, especially with the game from a series I really like, but... I really don't think this game is up to par. Let's start with the story. While I like how they reinvented the characters, the story itself is a little... disjointed. The whole impetus of the game is the titular Mirror of Fate, which really doesn't enter into the equation except as a MacGuffin. I'm sure there could have been another way to get the Belmonts into the story, but since Lords of Shadow is really Gabriel's story, and therefore Dracula's, the whole Belmont family trying to kill Dracula thing seemed kind of shoehorned in. Well, I mean, we couldn't call this game Castlevania 2, Simon's, and Alucard's, and Trevor's Quest. I mean, the title's already long enough as it is. You could call it Dracula's Curse. I mean, that sounds like a great title, particularly with the story, but uh, it's too bad some other game already took that title. The HD edition of the game also fixes something that I felt was wrong with the original 3DS title. You could use the D-pad. 
I mean, for crying out loud, it's not even a 3D game. Why can't I use the D-pad on the 3DS? Mirror of Fate would actually be a case for the now-defunct 3DS Circle Pad Pro, which also added the two extra shoulder buttons. But we really shouldn't fault the game designers here. It's more of a fault of the system, and the folks at Mercury Steam had to work with what they had. And I have to admit now, Mirror of Fate is a little, well, short, even with the difficulty settings. Mind you, I had fun finding all the nooks and crannies in each of the maps, but once you beat the game, it's all about speedrunning. The exploration-based Castlevanias do have a little speedrunning element to them, but it's not the main element of the game, and I would have liked bigger maps and castles than just having to run roughly the same castle nearly three times. I find myself in a little bit of a dilemma right now, you see. I'm finding I'm asking myself the same question I asked when I was playing Eco and Shadow of the Colossus when they were re-released back on the PlayStation 3. And that question is, would I have liked this game had I gotten it at launch? Well, I don't have an answer to that question. But I do have the answer to another one. Is Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate worth your cash? Jeez, it's a long name. Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate is the longest title of a game I've ever reviewed. And it's also one of the shortest Castlevania games I've ever played, at least in terms of the modern ones. Mirror of Fate retails normally about 30 bucks, which is what you'll see on the Nintendo eShop and some retailers. I got it for about 15 bucks plus tax off of Amazon, and in all honesty, the game is pretty easy, so I'm not even sure if it's worth that. The less refined controls and the lack of difficulty don't make up for being able to see the map on the second screen. The HD edition on PlayStation Network and Xbox Live is also $15, and I'd rather get that version. It's easier to see, the controls make much more sense, and the extra difficulty settings will actually challenge people. That version is much more worth the price tag. But I'd get it on sale if at all possible. I've heard that if you already pre-ordered Lords of Shadow 2 on PlayStation Network or Xbox Live, you can get Mirror of Fate for free as a download. You can also get a download code by buying the already out Castlevania Lords of Shadow Ultimate Collection available on both of those systems as well. But as a lot of people who know me already know, I kind of like to have a box. And as Jim Cornette once said, anything that comes out of a box immediately gets over. <laughs>